Regirock has always been an absolute defensive powerhouse. At base 200 defense, 100 special defense, and 100 attack, it's usually able to be annoying before going down. While it often plays more of a support role, Regirock can be an offensive threat with huge damage from body press, which uses the defense stat as attack. It also has the ability Sturdy, which guarantees that you can't be knocked out with a single hit if you're at full HP. And if you are knocked to low HP range, we can use the Custap Berry to allow ourselves to move first when it's not supposed to. This then allows the Slow Rock Boy to click a massive explosion to catch people by surprise, and it's usually able to take a Pokemon down with it. With this, Regirock can be super clutch because it always finds its way into low HP, and it's super fun to use. Alright look, I feel like the art of just straight up exploding in competitive Pokemon has been lost. But I am here to be the change that the world needs. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second, and you can save a Regirock's life. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get into the match. So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Glamora. Now this thing is pretty bad for me, mostly because I don't have a grounded poison type to switch into toxic spikes, but also... I don't have hazard removal, and uh, it's kind of bad. But listen, I'm here for a good time, not a long time, baby, and I lead off with the Hisuian Electrode, who can just go for a nice little Specs Volt Switch Pivot, which does like half to the thing, and I'm like, okay, maybe I can get away with this thing not having a, two layers of Toxic Spikes up at least. On the Pivot here, I decide, okay, you know what who's actually a pretty good option to try to set up against this thing? Is that boy Sharpoon. I'm telling you, Veluza is a massive threat that people just to underestimate. So it turns out they actually just go ahead and manually set up a layer of toxic spikes and that is definitely one way to do it if you want to ensure you don't have to rely on the toxic debris. So at this point I decide to go for a substitute and thinking maybe they either switch here or they go for the stealth rock which they do which allows me to get the free sub and the fish is about to go burr. So at this point they are still faster than me so they're gonna be able to break the sub. However this is gonna allow me to cut my own self up and I hope you like sushi bitch cuz it is gonna be time to be doing some serving here. They go for that earth power, it does take out the sub, and is like, oh no, whatever will I do? I guess just gonna slice my shit up. So I go for that filet away here, and of course that does give us the nice little plus two in attack, uh, but more importantly the plus two in speed at this point, because since I already broke the substitute, or the, the potential focus sash on the Glamora, uh, I now outspeed, and I should be easily able to kind of take care of this thing. I also enjoy a nice little citrus berry snack here, and that brings me up you know, about to half. So at this point, I can just go for that Aqua Cutter out speed, and we cut ourselves up, and then we cut you up. The flower goes down. It does lay down that second layer of the Toxic Spikes, which is annoying, but again, I'm, t I'm actually kind of fine with it, as a lot of this team relies on kind of quick momentum anyway. So at this point, we get to see what they want to switch into on a setup Veluza. So it turns out they decide to go into the... Grimmsnarl here, who of course is likely just going to have access to the Reflect in the light screen, probably has the light clay to be annoying, and it does go for that Reflect. Now, it's not a huge deal because it actually looks like Veluza has a two-hit KO in this thing regardless, and I also take this opportunity to lay down another substitute. This Veluza is all about just cutting its own HP to do stuff, and uh, I like this thing's style. So, they now go for the light screen just for good measure uh, to ensure that uh, obviously both sides of the spectrum are going to be covered on defense there. I do go for that Aqua Cutter, which does do over half, which is amazing. Through the Reflect, a plus two Veluza goes crazy. And of course, now I outspeed. I can go for another Aqua Cutter, finish off the Grim Snarl, and now the countdown is on to see if the Veluza uh, can actually make it happen here. The main reason why I wanted to get up a second uh, substitute is because they have a roaring, or sorry, Raging Bolt on their team. Crazy ass names I can't keep up with these days, but Raging Bolt with the priority, Thunderclap is going to be annoying. Uh, also, now they go into Chandelure, and I'm like, okay, I'm actually just going to click the Aqua Cutter here. Uh, a Terra Grass seems likely, however, I know that through Reflect, um, a Psycho Cut isn't even going to knock it out anyway, so I go for the safe option here as they do commit the Terra Grass. And he turns himself into a nice little flower pot, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to slice him up with the Aqua Cutter. Doesn't do a lot through the Reflect and the Resistance. Um, but seeing as, you know, I still have the sub up, we're actually in a pretty good spot here. So, this allows them to fire off an energy ball because they need to break my substitute to do anything uh, against the Veluza here. And, of course, that is going to break the sub. But, we're now in a spot where I've got enough chip on this thing with the Aqua Cutter that I'm feeling like a Psycho Cut has a chance to kill here. Plus, both of these moves have high crit chances. So, I go for that Psycho Cut, uh, and it just straight up knocks it out. Through the Reflect, Veluza is an absolute beast. This is not a Veluza video, as you'll see later. 
Um, but this thing does uh, have the ability to punch holes in teams to kind of open the door for other members. So, now they decide to bring in the beast that we are afraid of, and that is Crazy Ass Giraffe Raikou. And this thing does activate its protosynthesis to give it a special attack boost, and I know that a thunderclap is coming here. Now, I also know that one-fourth of my HP is 41 HP, so this actually allows me to predict the thunderclap and go for another substitute. That's going to bring me down to 1 HP, which is actually hilarious. And now, since we are safe from our substitute, they can thunderclap again if they want. Um, but I can just go for a free psycho cut here, try to roll the chance to get a crit, um, but we don't get it. And luckily, at least, we are able to knock it down to pretty much exactly half here, which allows them to thunderbolt to break the substitute. And now, we are definitely going to be vulnerable to the thunderclap, and there's pretty much nothing Veluza can do at this point. We've kind of exhausted all our damn options. I'm down to 1 HP. Uh, so I do let them finish me off with a thunderclap, but... Again, I was able to kind of burn their Terra, they had to waste it on the Chandelier, and in general, I was able to break down the team with some solid Veluza work. So, the Reflect also now wears off, the one turn freaking too late. However, this allows me to switch into whatever I like, and I decide I'm gonna go into the Regirock here. Now, this Regirock, of course, relies on the Custap Berry uh, to do some fun shenanigans. However, I come in, I am, of course, gonna get that bad poison. I'm thinking with the combo of, like, Stealth Rock and the Poison, uh, after the damage from like a Thunderbolt, I might be put into range with that Custap Berry. Uh, they go for the Dragon Pulse here, and it knocks me down to 65, which is not quite going to be range to my Custap. Now, it does allow me to fire off a Rock Slide, which isn't quite enough to knock this thing out. And sadly, after the Poisoning, I'm not going to be put in a spot uh, where I'm going to be able to move first due to that Custap. And uh, that is actually unfortunate, as I do want to switch this thing out. Now, the good thing about switching this out is I know that the next time it comes in, on the Stealth Rock, it's going to put me into Custap range, and I'm going to be able to surprise outspeed anything. So, that is going to be my plan for the Regirock for later, as they still have some huge threats left on their team, and I kind of also need to figure out what the hell I'm going to do about this Raging Bolt. This thing is honestly such a monster, especially against my team, but I decided to switch into Passimian here, mostly just as a sack, because I don't really have anything else that wants to come into this. As, uh, I do surprisingly live in attack, however, of course, now that leaves me open to the Thunderclap, and uh, he thunderclaps my cheeks at this point, and down goes the monkey. So, now at least I'm open to a free switch. I can revenge with something, and I figure the best chance I have is to go into Tauros here. I'm kind of one of the only things that I can take and attack at this point, uh, at least barely, and then I can be able to fire off an Earthquake and finish this thing. And with the Raging Bolt gone, I'm going to feel much better about this matchup. So, the Limey Boy comes in, and of course their only answer here is going to be with that priority thunderclap, so... I'm looking at the damage thinking, there's actually, hopefully this doesn't kill, it doesn't quite knock me out, which allows me to kill it with a body slam, just to cover for a potential switch there, and that does take care of the Raging Bolt. So, now we're at a point where, with the remaining ones they have left, I'm going to try to get this Regirock uh, to stop a potential sweep, because they have some scary options over there. So, they decide to go into the Palafin on the free switch, which makes sense. I kind of expected them to lead with this thing and go for the flip turn to try to get it into... Uh, it's hero form. Luckily though, Tauros is actually faster than Palafin, which allows me to go for the body slam, and it nearly knocks this thing out, which is actually amazing. So Tauros gets some huge chip before we go down. Uh, they do finish me off, of course, with the flip turn, but luckily for us, that's going to make it so they have to reveal what they want to switch in here, and then I can decide a matchup. Now, they decide to go into the Lilligant here. Listen, Hisuian Lilligant is actually a massive threat with this thing's ability to set up, and I am really running out of options here. So, I decide, you know what, it is time. I'm going to bring back in the H face, and we're going to catch him off guard. I come in, the Stealth Rock knocks me down to my Custap Berry range, and I'm like, all right, this is what we've been waiting for, baby. I can just go ahead and eat my berry, and they're like, uh-oh, this is not going to be good for me, because we're just going to... So the most clutch explosion ever is just going to straight up knock this thing out along with me and they actually just straight up turn off their switch which is the funniest thing. We were able to cause the rage quit with the cussed out berry explosion and that is why we play the game boys. That <laughs> I guarantee you they set their switch down and didn't pick it up for the rest of the day. So that is going to be the end of the match and uh, that's probably the best, most hilarious ending that could have happened there and uh, yeah sometimes the explosion makes you immediate, like, but he turned off his switch, like, before his Lilligan even died, which is the best part, so, <laughs> thank you guys very much for watching, I do appreciate all the support on these videos, and, uh, I'll catch you guys next time, peace out.